Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. It's a new prescription for a new you, America. Let's kick it off with Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hi. How can I help? Uh, pardon? How can I help? Hi, uh, yes, sir. First of all, I was diagnosed with um, rheumatoid arthritis, and then they diagnosed me with hepatitis C. They sent me from the rheumatologist to a specialist for the hepatitis, and he wanted me to go on what was uh, Pegasus and ribovirin. Mm -hmm. And I did that, and I was only able to do it for a month and a half, and I needed to do it for an entire year. Um, I could not handle it. I yeah. just couldn't. The depression and the, it just it was horrible. It was too much. Was, yeah. And so I'm, like, stuck with it. <laughs> And um, I have to take uh, naproxen, 500 milligrams, twice a day for the arthritis, and also prednisone, 5 milligrams a day. I have tried to cut one or the other out. I go to health food stores. Um, I've uh, really tried to watch my diet and change things. I have a book called um, Healing Foods, and I've been reading up on a lot on the different foods that are anti-inflammatory, you know, like ginger and pineapple apple and sure. um, cherries and things and I do all of that but when I try to get off of the naproxen and the, um, the prednisone I get to where I can't even get myself dressed and and so I feel like I'm just like in a and they tell me that if I could um, get through to the treatment for the hepatitis C that they believe that that's what brought on the, um, the arthritis so I feel like I'm just like stuck, and um, and it does get worse, yeah. and um, I just don't know what I. And I went uh, yesterday to the doctor because my stomach now I'm having a lot of problems. Um, I guess because of the naproxen, and um, now they're wanting me to go on the 16th, and they want to put I don't know what the proper name of it. They're going to put a light down into my stomach to see what's going on. Right. Well, they're they're going to go in. And, and do that just to see exactly what's going on. There's an endoscopy, and they're going to go in and do that. But here's here's the deal. When it comes to the way you feel right now, how much different is it than, say, a month ago? Uh, is it stabilized? I mean, even though, it's, even though it's painful, is it stabilized? Yeah. Yeah, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, you said you started changing your diet and you started eating different foods, and that's a good thing. It really is. But what is your what does a day look like for you and what you eat? Let me just see breakfast, lunch and dinner what that looks like. Okay, I eat like a um a healthy cereal, I call it, um, like uh, something with flax seed in it and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's organic. I try to always buy organic. And then usually some um, watermelon and cantaloupe, uh, depending on the time of the year, you know, because sure. you can't get good fruit all the time during the year. And then sometimes a cup of yogurt with that. I've been trying to switch to soy yo yogurt because I heard it's better than um, with milk in Don't it. Don't want to do soy. And, okay, That's right. keep I going. do that. And then for lunch, um, I usually have like a whole wheat tortilla with um, either peanut butter on it or um, scrambled eggs with a little bit of salsa. Okay. And I buy organic eggs. Good. And then dinner. for dinner, we, we love to eat salmon. But the stuff that you get in the grocery store is not good. And so we went to Alaska recently, and I'm going to be ordering our fish um, on our, you know, calling them like that. And then I try to have some kind of a steamed vegetable. Vegetable. Um, I've tried to cut out soda pops. I'm saying I was doing really good, but then here lately I, I've just felt so discouraged because the prednisone is causing me to gain weight. Right. And I feel like here I've been eating all this healthy. I can't get off the, the prescription drugs, and I'm not losing any weight, and I'm not feeling any better. Yeah. And so I've been drinking soda pops here and there. And um, um, so basically I had been doing real good eating, so I don't want to talk too much. <laughs> Right. It's okay. It's all right. Well, I'm, here's kind of the bottom line. With with what I what I hear from you right now, I think get a copy of my book, Empowering Your Health. First, I think it's going to help you a lot. You're you're doing you're on the right path. You're going the right direction, but there's certain little things that you're doing that's still creating a lot of inflammation in your body. Like for example, peanut butter. 
just making a simple change to almond butter or cashew butter will make a big, a big, as a matter of fact, a huge difference. And a wheat tortilla, when you drink, eat anything with wheat flour in it, when you've got an inflammatory condition, it just is really wreaks havoc on your body because of the gluten. Gluten is a protein that's in most grains. It's definitely in wheat. And it causes a, a lot of inflammation in the body. So, see, there's, there's another one. Everything else sounds pretty good. But I would avoid any milk product. I would avoid any grain that you'll start feeling better. There are certain supplements that can help you. Cod liver oil can work well. Uh, I would do at least a tablespoon of that twice a day. And also, hydrochloric acid, HCL, it's betaine hydrochloride. It works great for breaking down the excess proteins and can help when you're dealing with these such situations, especially with arthritis. Any kind of inflammatory condition makes a big, big difference in. Now, here, let's go around to hepatitis C for a second. Building up the immune system. And I know you couldn't handle the antivirals, but there are some things you can do with hepatitis C. Remember, viral activity, it's not about getting rid of the virus because the virus is pretty much always going to be hanging around. But to get it to go dormant where it's not really doing anything, it's like I always say, you can't really turn the light switch off in in this sort of thing. But what you can do is you can get a dimmer switch on the light and turn that dimmer switch all the way down. And that's just a great way to look at it. So with hepatitis C, building the immune system the best way you can, I'd use high levels of vitamin C, five to 6,000 milligrams a day. And also with hepatitis C, you want to stay away from two food groups. You want to stay, well, foods. You want to stay away from almonds and also chocolate. I know that's kind of a bummer. But with almonds and chocolate, they're high in L-arginine. And L-arginine is an amino acid. That can be good for a lot of things in the body, but it's bad for viruses because it stimulates viral activity. And one amino acid you definitely want to include in your diet on a regular basis is L-lysine. L-lysine actually keeps the the viral uh, infections down. So you can handle two to 3,000 milligrams twice a day. Unbelievable. It's great for just... I mean, prevention is really good. So lysine is good. Stay away from the L-arginine, almonds, chocolate, and those would be some helpful tips for hepatitis C. Now, getting the immune system strong, astragalus, silver, there are great ways to do that. You can use Easy Act Tea. You can use simple things like vitamin B17, which is apricot seeds. There's some great research behind that. So there's some, there's some things you can really do to bolster the immune system and keep it strong. And hepatitis C doesn't mean life is over. I know it may seem like that in a lot of ways, but it doesn't mean that it is. So staying on top of your body, giving it what it needs, building the immune system, it's a great way to go. And I want to encourage you that it's not over. It's not. You're in a good place right now. You're in a good place. You just got to make the right decisions. And knowing that you want to get well is one thing. But, you know, making the right choices, the good common sense decisions to make your body function better, that's another. And you're on the right on the right path. Get a copy of my book, Empowering Your Health. Get started on that, darling. I think it's going to help you out tremendously. Thanks for being a listener. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. What is your health challenge? Let's talk about it. Whatever it is, diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, you got something crazy like Lou Gehrig's disease and you want to talk about it, terminal cancer, whatever it is, if the body can get sick, remember there's always hope for better health. So tonight let's talk about it. You've got friends, you've got family members, you've got coworkers, you have loved ones, and they need help with their health, then you know what? Let's get on the phone and talk about it. Come up with the real answers for their health. So, you know, empowering someone else's health is powerful. So remember the choices you make today can and will determine the health you'll have tomorrow. So what we do and how, who we empower and how we empower them is so important. So what could you learn right now to teach maybe somebody you care about? 
and help them with their health. Let's do that tonight. Give me a call. Let's talk about someone you care about, someone you love that you know is going through a really tough time with their health and they need help. And let's come up with some answers for them. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Let's go to Jim now. Hi, Jim. Welcome to the show. Um, I have a friend, she's 74 years old, and about nine weeks ago she worked extra hard in the yard all day long. And um, the next morning um, she woke up with a metallic taste in her mouth uh, and salt, metallic, and a strong, strong salt taste. She had a headache, earache, and um, she's in good health, no problem. She had a headache, earache, and, and she felt sick, and she was throwing up, and she couldn't keep any food down and she hardly got out of bed for three days and she's seen all the doctors and everything like that she can only she lost 25 pounds she can only eat cream of wheat and insure and a couple of things and um her tea, her tongue is coated white and um she has um the doctors uh, they've they've run all the tests okay all the tests would be appropriate to run and uh, the only thing they do they were talking about a brain scan they hadn't done that yet but other than that, she says that the taste is so strong in her mouth that it's like she licks a salt block and then uh, drank a, drinks a, a, a glass of uh, salt water from the wow. sea, you know? Yeah. And oh, so yeah. I was just wondering, I heard you, I happened to hear you on the air, and I just thought maybe you could come up with something. She doesn't, not the kind of person to have psychosomatic problems, but, you know, I just was wondering if you have heard it before. Uh, uh, and and have any idea what she might do, or maybe she could eat something. You could bring up something she could eat or something. Well, there's there's a lot she can do. Now, she's had all the tests. She's had blood work done, right? She's had all that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. The first thing you want to do is that. Now, with the white-coated tongue, typically that comes from the digestive tract, and I don't know that that's what triggered her the other day when she got out and, and did all that activity. it was nine weeks ago okay yeah, nine weeks ago and uh but she's not she's a little better now she was sick for a long time she's a little bit better but she still got this terrible salt taste in her mouth and predominantly salt now it was metallic you know at first and salt but now it's just well it's still a little metallic too no, I get it. So with a white tongue, first thing you want to do is you want to start clearing out the digestive tract. In my book, Empowering Your Health, we talk about a super cleanse. And what it does, it clears out the body for potential yeast, fungal, bacterial, viral-related infections. And what you do is you do a, you drink this solution. You drink it for about three to four days. You don't do any food, so you sip on it. She'll create this solution. Basically, what you do is you'll take two tablespoons of maple organic maple syrup, a pinch of cayenne pepper, and squeeze half a lemon, all of that in about a 12-ounce glass of water. So you mix, is this all in your book, Doc? It's all in my book. And so Okay, if, I empower if, your health. It, I heard, I, I heard it, your show a few times. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So here's the thing. What you want to do is is you want to make sure that you do the maple syrup and then also pinch the cayenne pepper and then also squeeze half a lemon. So when you put all that together in this solution, you drink that for about three to four days, depending on how she's doing, how she's feeling, and you make up about a gallon. So if she can get through about a half, three quarters of a gallon a day, that would be great, sipping on it every 15 minutes. And it will absolutely clear the digestive tract out. Unbelievable for making sure that, that anything gets cleared out, yeast, fungal, and that tongue should go from white back to its original color, which is more of that pale pinkish color. So I would get started on that. Then have her follow the anti-inflammatory diet coming out of that little cleanse and using oregano oil. A tablespoon a day will keep the digestive tract cleaned out along with probiotics. At least four in the morning on an empty stomach, four in the evening on an empty stomach will help. The metallic taste is coming from a zinc deficiency. And so have her start hitting zinc pretty strong. I would say at least 80 milligrams per day for about eight weeks and see how her body responds. I think you're going to find that it will respond quite well. I would continue going on with your physicians and what they have going on as far as the testing. So I think it's smart, it's smart to get the testing done, testing done. So get started and let me know. Keep me in the loop on that. Either email me back or give me a call back on the show, man. Thanks for the call. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. I'm your health and lifestyle coach. Quote for the day comes from Michael. Patrick King. He says, seasons change, so do cities. People come into your life and people go, but it's comforting to know the ones you love are always in your heart. And if you're very, very lucky, just a plain ride 
away. That's very cool. I like that. 888-283-7272. What's going on with your health? Let's talk about it right now. You know, the amazing thing about the body is it regenerates every single day. Each day old cells die off and new cells form. That's good news. That gives us hope that we can get our health back. Pregnant moms who overeat, check it out. You could be making obese babies. Women who gain too much weight during pregnancy have big babies, putting their children at risk for becoming heavy later on. So drop the weight, moms. And don't you have to gain too much? Twenty-five to thirty pounds while you're pregnant is is all right. You don't have to be gaining seventy-five pounds and eating everything under the sun because it's going to affect your baby. So just be careful with that. American researchers followed all births in Michigan and New Jersey between 1989 and 2003. They focused on women who had more than one child. To exclude the possibility that women who were genetically predisposed to be obese were simply passing those genes to their babies among more than 500 women, 500,000 women, rather, and their 1.1 million infants studied women that gained more than 50 pounds during their pregnancy made babies who were about 150 grams heavier at birth. Be careful with the weight during pregnancy. Eat and follow whole foods and watch what will happen to the birth of your child. It'll be great. To find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. Hi, Lonnie. Hi. Good to talk with you. What's up? Hey, well, I'm suffering with some depression and some anxiety, and okay. every once in a while I have some uh, panic attack. I um, really don't sleep all that well. Okay. Uh, I do sleep, but I, I wake up periodically through the night, like maybe once or twice a night. And uh, it just... You know, and I'm on antidepressants, and I'm on anti-anxiety medication, and some weeks are better than others. It's just a lot of fatigue and stuff like that. I got it. When did it all start? Has it been going on for a long time? Yeah, it's been going on for a while. What triggered it? Did you go through something? Yeah, <laughs> periodically, yeah. Okay. So is, is, is the life just been tough in the last several years? I'm sorry. Life, again. life has just been tough in the last several years. Yeah. 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 Okay. What kind of medications have you taken? Uh, right now, I'm taking. I can't name them. I can't say the name of it. But I am taking an antidepressant and I'm taking an anti-anxiety. Taking Xanax. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. Yeah. How many do you take a day? One. One milligram. What is it? Oh, I don't know what the milligrams. Okay, I don't have my pills with me. That's all right. I'm just I'm just wanting to get a gauge on where your your brain chemistry is right now. All right, here's the deal. With our brain chemistry and the way we feel, they're called neurotransmitters, and you really can balance out brain chemistry without medications. Now, it's not smart to do that cold turkey. It's better to slowly and gradually do that. But the depression and anxiety they really go hand in hand, and in just to give you an example, there's, there's some things. When you're dealing with anxiety, it's GABA. It's the name of it. There's four main neurotransmitters. Okay, There's dopamine, acetylcholine, serotonin, and GABA. And GABA right. is the one that's the toughest for a lot of people to really get in line. So it's called gamma amino butyric acid. And it is the one inhibitory brain chemical that we have. It's the one that makes us chill out. And when you get anxious and you, and you have those panic t- attack type feelings, the GABA is what really comes in and, and really balances stuff. So let's talk about GABA for a second and what to do to balance it. Because I know you're probably tired of being on the meds. You're tired of being tired and tired of being fatigued. So let's get into right. the brain chemistry part first, and then we're going to get into some other issues too. So for GABA, there's always foods that I always talk about eating certain foods, doing this, doing that. But with GABA, there's certain foods that you actually want to avoid. And here they are. You want to avoid peanuts, walnuts, hazelnuts, almonds, cheese, oatmeal, wheat, rice, salmon, spinach, and beans. <laughs> so it's a lot for GABA, but but those are probably foods you eat all the time, aren't they? Uh, well, 
I love peanut butter. <laughs> there you go. And see, every time you eat foods like that, <laughs> it's driving it's driving your GABA levels down. It sounds so simple. You're like, my gosh, all I've got to do is change what I eat. But it's true. Because if you're taking Xanax and you're eating foods on a regular basis that push down the GABA levels, you see what I'm saying? It's like a yo-yo, a yin-yang effect. It's there, One is affecting the other. It's like a seesaw. And you're not really right. getting the benefit that you're looking for. So right. our foods, and I eat a lot of spaghetti and well, there you go, which is like wheat-based that. products, right? So it's it. You have to look at it like, okay, what am I doing every single day to make sure I have the best health that I can have? And if you do it smart, and it's kind of like work smart, don't work hard. It's that kind of thing. I mean, it's hard to avoid sometimes working hard, but it, it it's it, working smart in this for your health is going to be important. So avoiding right. those foods that's that plays a big role. Supplements that are important for GABA, three of them. Number one, L-theanine is an amino acid. L-theanine is an amino acid. And then L-taurine and valerian root. All three of those are great for for doing this. So those three are really important for GABA. Now, the other, let's get into serotonin for just a second. With depression, that's what your antidepressant is doing. It's managing serotonin levels. And serotonin is a big one. I mean, I would say that's probably one of the biggest ones that people deal with on a regular basis. And depressants, one of the number one medications prescribed right now. So to get serotonin balanced out the way you need to, a couple things. Foods that you want to include in your diet are mushrooms, fish, chicken, red meat, and turkey. If you can include those in your diet every single day, you're naturally going to support serotonin levels, which is going to help lift you out of the depression. And then hopefully the medications, even if you could get the dosage down in half, would be phenomenal. So it's about figuring out exactly how your brain chemistry works and getting it where it needs to be. Supplements you can use, you have to be careful because some of these you, you really can't take along with an SSRI, which is a serotonin uh, medication that you're taking. But you can take St. John's wort. You've got to be careful with that. Niacinamide and vitamin B6, pyridoxal 5-phosphate. All of those are great. They're great for brain chemistry. It's good for getting your serotonin levels balanced. It's just great. So get started on some of that, and that will be helpful. Now let's get, into, let's get into some things with you for just a second to go into. Let's talk about what you eat on a regular basis, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Talk to me about that, Lonnie. Well, I normally don't eat breakfast because I don't get up until about 9.30. Okay. Uh, and I usually eat probably spaghetti for lunch, and I eat some spaghetti for, for di- uh, no, I eat some Roman noodles for, for dinner. All right. That's about all I eat. Okay. So, see, I mean, your diet's pretty poor. It is. I mean, right. that's, that's horrible. It's no, there's no variety. That You're not getting any main solid nutrients out of your food. So let's let's switch you over to the anti-inflammatory diet. Now, not only are you going to eat the food groups that we talked about for your brain chemistry, but we also have got to include fruits and vegetables as far as your carbohydrates. Throw away the pasta. We've got to get a lean quality protein in like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs. We've got to get your healthy fats up, which are important for brain chemistry. So that's almonds, walnuts, cashews, avocados, fish oils. All of that is really important for your your brain chemistry. I mean, you have to have fat. Matter of fact, the, the brain is made of fat. And so it runs on glucose, but it's made of fat. So it's important to have enough of that, the, the good kind, by the way. So exercise is important, too. Talk to me about your lifestyle choices. My lifestyle choices? Mm-hmm. Exercise. Do you exercise at all? No, I don't. <laughs> Come on, partner. We've got some things to change here to get you where you need to be, really. I mean, it's, we've got right. to make some changes. So 30 minutes a day, do you like to do anything? I mean, walk, jog, work out, well, play I, tennis? Well, I, I walk for my job because I'm a, I'm a security guard, so I walk oh, that's a great. lot. But I do walk some. All right. I could probably, I could probably use some more. Yes, yeah, so structured, structured walking and, and working out with weights and some of that would be really good, too. I'd make a goal, not work-related. I would make a goal to separate your exercise time and do 30 minutes a day, five days a week, doing something you enjoy. And I don't care what it is, but just make it happen. Now, the other right. thing that you want to look into is your water intake. So you drink a lot of water or are you more of a soda, tea, and coffee guy? Uh, soda, tea, coffee, Kool-Aid. Yeah, not a whole lot of water. All right. 
Yeah, we've got to get you started. So water, half your body weight in ounces of water. When you do things that have sugar in it, you drink sodas, you drink Kool-Aid with sugar, you're throwing off your brain chemistry in a major, major way. See, you're, you're in a state right now where depression is, is overriding everything in your life. Mm-hmm. But you're making choices every single day that encourages depression in your body. Mm. Now, you didn't know that because if we knew better, we'd do better. But see, right. now you know better. So now if I were to talk to you in two weeks and you're still doing it, you're still drinking Kool-Aid, I just need to, I'll have to drop the hammer. <laughs> because, brother, there's no way you're going to come out of this depression doing what you're doing. You can't. Okay. It's, just, it's physiologically okay. impossible. So you've got okay. to make some changes. You've got to, you've got to want to get well. You've got to make the decision, say, you know what? I'm sick and tired of living this way. Life maybe threw me some, some bad cards, but I'm going to take them and I'm going to make a good life out of it. And you have to take charge and take responsibility for your health. Cause if not, the best you can hope for is to take Xanax and take an antidepressant and just hope for the best, but you can do it. It's not hard. I'm telling you, it's not. I see patients all the time. Talk to people on the radio. Talk to them on TV. Hear the success stories. They shoot me email. You wouldn't believe the emails that we get just of people that have applied these principles, and they're just they're living great. Do me a favor, though. Talk to your primary care physician and get blood work done every six months. Go there and tell them, say, you know what? Will you work with me on weaning this stuff down? And they will. Don't do it on your own need a head coach got to have somebody with you that'll walk with you in this because it's important and you're in a good place so you're ready we wouldn't be having this conversation if you weren't ready and being ready is half the battle because you got to make sure that when you're ready to change and coming off and getting your brain chemistry analyzed and getting it balanced it's it's a big deal and it's a big commitment but you're going to notice as you walk through this that life will change for you It'll get different. And you're going to notice energy levels go up. Your relationships will be better. Your friendships will be better. You will be better. You'll be better at your job. You, it's just amazing what can happen once you change. But the mind is where everything starts. Lonnie, you've got to always start in the mind. You get that right and everything else will be right. Do you want to get well? Your answer is yes. My question to you is, are you willing to do whatever it takes, no matter how hard it might be? And your answer is Yes. Right? Yeah. So it's time. No yeah, cause, uh, cause see, I've got a pain in my in my uh, right side, right underneath my rib cage. Yeah. When I laugh, it hurts. So I don't know what that is. Well, on your right side, underneath the rib cage, yeah. two things. Yeah. Two things. Number one, number one is it's probably the gallbladder being aggravated because once you get once you get through depression it can affect the gallbladder but more importantly it's probably a hernia because the laughing pressure is causing the bulging up through the diaphragm get that checked out by your doc connect with on call radio and watch on call tv at inshapenetwork.com Talking about how it piles up quickly. Breakfast, on average, most people get about 372 milligrams of sodium. And then also, this is in the Wall Street Journal, by the way. Morning snack, people get about 406 grams of sodium, milligrams of sodium. Lunch, 1,204 milligrams. It's pretty incredible. A little snack in the afternoon, 260 milligrams. Dinner, 901 milligrams. And that totals to about 3,400 milligrams of sodium a day when the recommended daily allowance is about 1,500 milligrams. So we're getting about double of what we should be getting. 
So it's pretty incredible when you think about it. Now, people with high blood pressure, yes, sodium can be a big deal. But I don't want you to freak totally out. Now, I'm reading that to you because that's standard thought for sodium levels. But, you know, our body has what are called the adrenal glands. They are the body's stress glands. And when they get weak and tired, then we get weak and tired. And keeping the sodium levels up in the body will strengthen the adrenals. They're little walnut-sized glands that sit on top of the kidneys. And they control our stress levels. They help our energy levels. They control fluid intake and outtake in the body. So they're really, really important. And when the adrenals get weak, we get weak. Sodium is one of the number one minerals that actually builds up those adrenal glands, keeps them strong, keeps them healthy, and is important for all of us to have. So I kind of split that down the middle. 3,400 is what everybody's taking in. Depending on your stress levels, and depending on blood pressure for you will depend on how much sodium your body can handle. But the instead of getting table salt and foods, the better source of sodium, if you are going to use any kind of table salt, Celtic sea salt, number one, uh, n- the best natural form of sodium comes from celery. So if you want to use celery juice, that's a great way to go. Or just eat regular celery. It's going to boost your natural sodium levels up and get things where they need to be. So, little tip on sodium is really, unless you're doing high blood pressure medication and you really need to cut things down at that point, sodium is actually a good thing. It'll keep your body strong and keep your energy levels up. As a matter of fact, I always tell people in the mornings, instead of drinking coffee to get the caffeine kick and actually crank up your cortisol, you should actually do more of a light broth, like chicken broth, beef broth, something like that, or chicken stock or beef stock. The natural sodium levels that are in there, don't get the low sodium kind, by the way. Get the ones fully loaded with sodium. It's not going to hurt you. And do that and start drinking that. And watch how you feel in the morning. Watch how it lifts you up in the morning. You'll find that your energy levels will go up. It's pretty amazing to get started on any of that incredible sodium. Watch the sodium levels, but don't overthink it. Because the body, if you're craving salt, you're craving it for a reason. Just remember that. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. What are you struggling with? What is your health challenge? Well, realize this. If the body can get sick, it can also get well. Matter of fact, let's go to George now and talk to him about it. Hi, George. Yeah. Good to talk with you. How can I help? Oh, hey, uh... Well, yeah, uh, the last guy that was on there was almost an uh, identical uh, mirror of me. But the thing is, my problem is at this point is atrial fibrillation. Sure. Okay. Um, I've had a bout with it about a year ago and had an ablation. And then everything was cleared up and everything went fine for a year. And then just two weeks ago, I was at the Nashville VA going through an evaluation and uh, had another, uh, I guess you would say, uh, issue with it where the heart rate was up to about 170. Wow. Okay. And, uh, and then they got it back down, let me go in a couple of days. And then I got back down here. They put a monitor on me, and then within a, about a week, uh, they were calling me and saying that they needed to call 911. So I went in, and uh, I'm just trying to make this thing real short here for you. It's all right. Now. It's all right, man. <laughs> so but, you know, the bottom line, I've got a, a atrial fibrillation, and, and I'm, I've heard all the, what they've got to say about it, and I'd love to hear what you've got to say about it. Well, with AFib, you've got to remember, you, first, you don't want to freak out with it. That's the number one thing, because a lot of times it gets... Well, that's what I've been doing. Yeah, don't, don't, don't let yourself freak out over it. One of the best things you can do for AFib, and believe it or not, this sounds so simple, but it's, it's very true. When you're looking at AFib, AFib, you want to look at the B vitamins, the B vitamins are the multivitamins of the heart. And you could do it in a liquid or a tablet form, but one to two, three times a day when you when you have the potential for AFib can help regulate. Now, the thyroid plays a big role, too, because the thyroid is responsible for the regulation of the heart rate and rhythm. So checking on the thyroid periodically, having blood work done, even at the VA, if they're not su- uh, suspecting that, I would have them check it. And have them check one of the elements or one of the tests called the TPO antibodies. TPO antibodies are going to be important along with the TSH, T3, and T4. So have them check all of that. And the thyroid condition is sometimes secondary to an anterior pituitary 
issue. So have them check your growth hormone levels, HGH, and have them check FSH and LH. All those hormones are going to be important for you to check, and the systems are going to be important to check too. But bottom line for me to you is to get started on B-complex vitamins. Get started on the anti-inflammatory diet in my book, Empowering Your Health, Cod Liver Oil, One Tablespoon Twice a Day, and the Foundation of Four, which would also include the multivitamin, digestive enzymes, and probiotics. Get started on that because that's going to get you on a good foundation for where you need to be with your health. It's so important. So get started. And the biggest thing is, is to not freak out. Because remember, if the body can get sick, it can also get well. You're not stuck where you are. I mean, is it something you got to deal with? Yeah, of course it is. But your body can change. And that is the most important part. Puts another hour in the charts. Like, thank our producer, Jay Patrick. Go tell one person something you learned on this show. And together, we can change the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. Listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora. For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over. But check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.